This Asus Tough Dash F15 laptop was sent to Kit Guru by Intel. And the reason Intel sent it is because it packs a Tiger Lake processor, the Core i7-11375H, which has a maximum turbo speed of 5 gigahertz. So that's a laptop with a name you can barely pronounce and a processor with a model code you can barely pronounce. 5 gigahertz from a laptop processor. It's not a desktop processor, this is a genuine 35 watt TDP. Yes, it draws more than that and it's really going for it. This is the processor that Intel was talking about at CES, or rather it's one of the processors they're talking about at CES. I have to say, the chassis itself is middle of the road. I mean, it's black plasticky. It's 15.6 inch on the diagonal. It's got a non-RGB but illuminated keyboard. The Tiger Lake Core i7 packs an Intel Iris Xe IGP. It's the one with 96 execution units, so the full model. However, we've also got RTX 3070 graphics from NVIDIA with 8 gig of memory. That's led to certain design choices by ASUS. So in addition to the cooling system, which clearly has to support both the CPU and the GPU, in addition, the system memory, for example, DDR4 3200 megahertz. If we had an IGP that uh, needed to run on the system memory, you can be sure it'd actually be uh, LP4266. So because it has adding graphics which have their own dedicated memory, ASUS has been able to pull back on the spec of the system memory because the CPU doesn't necessarily need super fast memory. In terms of ports and connectors, on the one side we have a pair of USB 3.2 Gen 1 USB ports, they're Type A's. On the other side we have a third of these ports. We also have an HDMI 2.0 and a Type C Thunderbolt 4, which supports USB 4 and also DisplayPort 1.4a. Removing the heavily ventilated bottom cover reveals a lot of space. We've got an extensive cooling system on the CPU and GPU. There are two M.2 slots. One is occupied by a one terabyte SK Hynix SSD, which is covered by a self-adhesive heatsink. The motherboard has onboard DDR4. You can see there's a module in the SODIMM slot, which means we've got dual channel memory. The battery is rated at 4800 milliamp hours or 76 watt hours if you prefer. The laptop weighs just over 2 kilos, I measured it at 208 kilos. In addition we've got just under 700 grams of power brick, take those two together therefore you're looking at 2.7 kilos in total. It's a mid-sized laptop that is a reasonable weight. Those RTX 3070 graphics are driving a full HD panel which has a 240Hz refresh rate. So quite clearly this laptop is aimed at gamers. In that sense, I'm mildly surprised the keyboard is not RGB. It's illuminated with a kind of light turquoise thing going on. Uh, so it has a mono light, which is perfectly pleasant. So it's actually far less bling than I might have expected to see. We're going to see how this laptop performs, but first, have you subscribed to Kit Guru Tech? If you haven't, please do it, and while you're at it, ring the bell. The laptop is controlled by a Zeus Armoury Crate, which will come as no surprise to anyone that knows the first thing about a Zeus. With the mains connected in silent mode, we can see PL1 is 30 watts and PL2 is 64 watts. Click up to performance mode. And now it's 64 watts sustained. The laptop is still nice and quiet. Go to turbo mode. Still 64 watts, but now we've got fan noise. You can see that cooling has ramped up. Go back to silent mode. Pull the mains cord. Now we're on battery. And PL1, PL2, 30 watts, 64 watts as before. We've got performance mode. 64 watts, 64 watts. But you will notice there are no more modes on offer. Reconnect mains power and turbo reappears. We're in performance mode. Let's see how the Core i7-11375H behaves in Cinebench R15. That's a solid 4.3 gigahertz on all cores. I can just hear a bit of fan noise. 
nice and quiet. Good rock steady performance. Only quad cores, but not bad. Alrighty, so what about single core? Let's see that 5 gigahertz in action. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you seeing 4.8 gigahertz? Are you seeing 4.9 or 5? I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing 4.8. Cast your mind back to Intel 10th gen on the desktop. Thermal velocity boost, 5.3 gigahertz as I recall on one core. Yeah, it would get there, but it was momentary and it wasn't really much of anything. But this... This is getting nowhere near 5 gigahertz. Let's have a look in the BIOS, shall we, and see what's what. To access the BIOS, we press the F2 key and the power key. We hold the F2 until we go into the BIOS. And there we are. And look, the processor is a Core i7 11370 rather than 11375. They sent me the wrong model. The fact is the difference between the 11370 and 11375 is absolutely nothing. It's clearly a matter of binning and judging by Intel's figures over on Arc, you pay quite a pretty premium for that extra momentary boost to 5 gigahertz. So what I've got here is a laptop that does indeed go to 4.8 gigahertz rather than 5.0 gigahertz. Moving away from single core speed to multi-core speed, I've mentioned 4.3 gigahertz all cores. Thing is you have to balance clock speed against power draw. Cast your mind back to the MSI white book I reviewed in September, I think it was of last year, which was a preview of Tiger Lake. So that's a quad core processor in a thin and light 14 inch chassis running Intel XE graphics. And that processor ran at 3.3 gigahertz while drawing 28 watts or 3.6 gigahertz while drawing 36 watts. So the three figures I have for you, 3.3 gigahertz, 25 watts, 3.6 gigahertz, 35 watts, flat out 4.3 gigahertz all cores. This processor requires 58 watts, at which point it's running at 90 degrees C and thermals are more of an issue. And you have to remember this is a 15.6 inch chassis that's considerably larger than that 14 inch MSI. So it seems to me the processor in this laptop is a slightly better version of the Tiger Lake we saw in that MSI all those months ago. But fundamentally, it's the same processor. Time for some benchmarks, starting with 3 d Mark Firestrike. The ASUS beats both the MSI white book we saw last year and also the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim with Ryzen 7 4800U. However, the ASUS has an RTX 3070 graphics chip, so of course it pounds those two laptops with their IGPs. If we simply compare CPU performance for those three laptops, it's actually a fairly close run thing. The surprise here is that the Lenovo with the 8-core Ryzen is below the two Tiger Lake laptops. Flicking over to Time Spy CPU performance, the situation is reversed somewhat. So AMD is now slightly ahead of the two Intels, and the new Tiger Lake is ahead of the previous Tiger Lake, but it's taking one heck of a lot of power to do it. 64 watts. It's not pulling quite 64 watts, 58 watts, but still, diminishing returns is the order of the day. Lining up a bunch of laptops in Blender Classroom tells a very clear tale. So Lenovo way ahead of the rest of the field. Then we have the ASUS running on maximum power, nominal 64 watts, but actually slightly under. We have that previous MSI white book with Tiger Lake running at 41 and a half watts. Then we drop back to the ASUS running at 35 watts. As you would expect, the ASUS at 35 watts and the MSI to nominal 41 and a half watts performance is basically identical. With that MSI slowed to 28 watts, performance drops by a step and then you drop the ASUS back to 25 watts and you can see how the performance varies again. So as you can see with this quad core Tiger Lake, as the power level drops, the performance steadily drops away too. But if you ramp it up to the max, the last little bit of performance costs a huge amount of power. Looking at a selection of games, it's crystal clear you have to run this laptop on mains power. The RTX 3070 graphics simply demand it. 
Performance with the mains connected is perfectly acceptable. We're talking 1080p, decent image quality, and the frame rate is well clear of 60. However, the minimums are fairly low. The ASUS delivers a decent gaming experience. Taking a closer look at Far Cry 5 New Dawn, 1080p, ultra image quality. On mains power with the RTX 3070, we've got 73 frames average, 42 minimum. Pulling the power cord, the frame rate drops average 25, minimum nine, so fairly hopeless. Switching from the RTX 3070 to the integrated Iris XE, on mains, the average is 17, minimum is 12. On battery, the average is 12, the minimum is 11. The Iris XE graphics in this laptop are negligible for gaming. The RTX 3070 clearly is a powerhouse. Battery life is absolutely fine. I got four and a half hours in our PC Mark 8 rundown test. You can double that for the real world, obviously not for gaming as I've just demonstrated. Call it nine hours. Are you away from home for more than nine hours a day at the moment? Probably not. Uh, are you on a train or a plane? Again, probably not. So perhaps battery life has become less important than it used to be. Shame that. So battery, no problem at all. Keyboard is perfectly okay. Touchpad is fine. The Wi-Fi is as fast as any Wi-Fi I've experienced doing games updates on my home Wi-Fi network. It just zipped along. The screen is perfectly okay. Clearly the standout features the 240 hertz, but the viewing angle, the colors, the lack of glossy coating, all that stuff, it just looks nice. Full HD at 100% resolution works perfectly okay, but it doesn't have any kind of wow. So focus on the 240 hertz and be happy. That's my advice. The pricing is a bit hard to nail down. The closest version I can find on sale in the UK has a 512 gigabyte SSD and a 144 hertz panel, that's 1300 pounds. This has a one terabyte SSD and a 240 hertz panel, so 1500 pounds. So relatively speaking, as laptops go, it's not killer expensive and you certainly get quite a lot of performance. The fact of the matter is, I'd be much happier if it didn't have a quad-core processor, even a nice zippy Tiger Lake. Six or eight would be better, and I wouldn't be the least bit upset if it was actually AMD powering the NVIDIA graphics rather than Intel. So despite the fact Intel sent me this laptop, I have to say the quad-core Tiger Lake, I'm somewhat underwhelmed. This is the thing, when you have a thin and light 14 inch laptop, you're playing to the Intel strengths. You've got the nice IGP, you've got a zippy processor, and you can turn the power down somewhat, and you get a good all round experience. With the bigger chassis, you've got a hulking great cooling system on the RTX 3070, the IGP is neither here nor there, the processor is nothing special. It's a laptop, it's perfectly fine, but you're not playing to Intel's strengths, not one little bit. So to my mind, this is a curious choice of a laptop, whereas the MSI white book with the Tiger Lake last year was absolutely excellent. That I liked a great deal. This is, eh. The fact this processor only turbos to 4.8 gigahertz rather than five gigahertz doesn't make the slightest bit of difference to me. The power draw of Intel's processors running at that type of speed, on the other hand, it's terrifying. There's little doubt in my mind that for the next year, possibly two, it's the low power draw of mobile Ryzen that's gonna be the real game changer.